Well, welcome to America Living Today. I'm Gordon Robertson. Hey, everyone, and I'm Ashley Key. Well, Bert Sommer has always enjoyed decorating for Christmas, like many of us, until one year it nearly turned fatal. He was changing a strand of lights on top of his roof when he slipped and fell 30 feet onto his head. Well, Bert should have died right then and there. Instead, he made a full recovery just in time for Christmas. Thanksgiving night, 2016, Bert Summer, a part-time pastor and father of five, was fixing Christmas lights with his son, James. Being a window specialist, Bert was used to scaling ladders. But this time, as he climbed to the second story of his home, he lost his footing. Bert's wife, Audrey, still remembers. The next thing I know is I hear the tumbling off of the roof. Bert fell headfirst 30 feet onto the concrete driveway. James was like, Mom! He wasn't responding whatsoever. There was about a three-foot area where it was just covered in blood. This is not good. I told him, I said, you're just not going to die on me. You're not, you're not, you're not leaving us. And then all of a sudden, everything went silent. My soul was just blowing up. In the name of Jesus, God, protect him right now. Raise him back up. I was like, OK, God, I know this looks bad. I know this, this really looks bad. But I need you to take over, and I need you, I need you to do what you do. Paramedics arrived within minutes, but it would take another half hour before they got a pulse. Bert was then transported to the nearest ER, where he was put into a medically induced coma. Bert had suffered a massive brain hemorrhage, and without surgery, wouldn't live through the night. Even then, one neurosurgeon believed an operation would be pointless. He was like, I'm, I am not going to do the surgery. And I'm like, please do the surgery. And he was like, he's going to die anyway. And I said, my husband is a beast. You do your part, and God will do his part, and my husband will do his part. You know, don't count him out yet. Reluctantly, the neurosurgeon agreed to the surgery, and it was a success. The following day, Bert's vitals remained stable, but doctors were still concerned about the possible residual effects. The left side was paralyzed because of the impact on the right side of the brain. They said that, you know, it could be permanent. I mean, they really, they painted the bleakest picture imaginable. It was then the reality of what could be began to overwhelm the family. And when I see all these tubes and him hooked up to all this stuff, I was like, oh, good God. It was heartbreaking. It really was. What is going to be his quality of life? What if he can't feed himself? What if he can't walk? What if he can't remember he has a wife and kids? I finally just had to turn it over and be like, OK, Lord, I can't do this. I can't sit and, and what if myself crazy? You know my doubts, you know my fears, you know, you know everything, and you know this man. God just proved himself to me and that he was the comforter and that he, he had it. You know, he had this, this wasn't anything for him. He created my husband and he was going, going to take care of him. I was like, you know what, everything's gonna be fine because I know who my God is. I know what he's done and what he's capable of. I've read it. I've been taught it, and I've even seen it. And if God don't do it, it's all good. God's still God. Alongside the Summer family, church members and friends from all over agreed in prayer. I really drew a lot of strength from just our church people. And whenever I just felt like I couldn't pray, I couldn't pray anymore, they came in and, and stood in the gap. Then 10 days after his fall, Doctors brought Bert out of the coma. Even though he couldn't talk, Audrey knew immediately that her husband was OK. I was able to see the brown eyes, and he knew that I was there. It was amazing. It was amazing. I was like, OK, God, you didn't fail me. You know, he's here. I said, Lord, I'm not sure what happened. I'm not sure, but I know I need you. Lord, I just want to do your work again. And he said, you will, just trust me. In the weeks that followed, Bird continued to defy expectations. His personality, all of his formulas for work, and all of the scriptures and things that he had memorized, 
everything just came back. On Christmas Day, the Summer family gathered at the hospital and celebrated their miracle. God worked in an impossible circumstance, and that's how the miracle happened. It meant everything. I mean, because we could have very easily been celebrating our first Christmas without him. And to be able to sit there and have our children, my husband and their dad, in total restoration, it was magical. It was really, truly magical. I was getting better and quicker, and they had taken the fall risk that was on my wrist. That was a big deal to me. I'm not a fall risk anymore. I can walk, I can get up, I can move. It just made me so thankful. I can do a miracle anytime, any place for anybody, and he chose me. No, 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 no. A few days after Christmas, Bert was released from the hospital. By March, he was back at his job as a window specialist. And by September, he was back in the pulpit. Hey, 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 hey. It doesn't matter what goes on, doesn't matter what doctors say, people, no matter what, Jesus has the final say regardless. You never have to question God's character. He is who he says he is. He is the healer. He is the comforter. The Bible says he's not a respecter of persons. God cares for the drug addict on the street as much as he cares for me, as much as he cares for you. If you needed a miracle today, you could get your miracle today too. What an amazing miracle. I'm reminded of the scripture that says, faith is the, is the substance of things hoped for. And something clicked with me actually this week in reading that scripture mm. and allowed. Sometimes that scripture has been confusing to me, but it's literally faith is what you hope for. It will happen because you have faith. And so you see that in that story with Bert, and it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, you first need to have hope. Yeah. And then you get the substance of things hoped mm. for. And it's and it's and and then make sure you you're putting love into that equation because faith works through love. Mm. Yeah. So how much do you love God? That's the first commandment. Love him with all your heart. Mm -hmm. And then you love others, and in that you realize God wants to heal. Mm -hmm. His love is perfect. Yeah. And he always wants to come through for us. He does. Well, we have a magazine. It's called Miracle Living Today. It has stories of people who've seen God answer their prayers. And to get your free copy and let me underline F-R-E-E, -E, all you got to do is call 1-800-700-7000. You can also visit our website, MiracleLivingToday.com. We want to encourage you in your faith. What God did for others, he will do for you. He absolutely will. Well, still ahead, a 23-year-old CrossFit coach is struck down by a heart attack. Doctors don't think they can save him. So how does the, his family get a miracle for Christmas? See for yourself coming up. But first, a holiday lunch turns deadly. This woman stops breathing and her heart stops beating for 15 minutes. Doctors warn her family that if she survives, she'll never be the same. See what happens next. Plus, we'll be praying for you right after this. Get Miracle Living Today, the devotional magazine from CBN. This beautifully illustrated publication will build your faith with compelling articles shared by CBN hosts and special guest writers. Be inspired by powerful testimonies of people who have seen God answer their prayers in incredible ways. Call 1-800-700-7000, visit MiracleLivingToday.com or text MIRACLE to 80888 to get your copy. I just turned and ex the excruciating pain came in my knee on the inside and it was like a jabbing knife. I made it to the doctor, found out it was a torn meniscus. So having the knee injury, being having to slow down was depressing. I was like, Lord, heal this. Sitting on the couch, a 700 club came on and, and that's when I saw uh, Gordon on. We say out loud to it be healed and be made whole. May all pain leave me. In Jesus' name, I receive it now. Now what you couldn't do before, do now. By faith, I'm gonna do this. I'm, by faith, I'm gonna walk. And I was walking, it wasn't hurting. I know that God healed me beyond a shadow of a doubt. I 
I'm not breathing enough to make a feather move. It really frustrated me because my quality of life had drastically changed. I could just say, just Lord, I need your help. If someone else, you have breathing issues. Take a complete breath and exhale as Jesus Christ heals you completely. I can feel that air going clear down to my stomach and back. He will always be there walking this out for your benefit. The pain first hit when Angie Cross was having lunch with her family just days before Christmas. Then she went into seizures and was foaming at the mouth. Before her husband could rush her to the ER, Angie stopped breathing and went into cardiac arrest. Here's why hospital staff call Angie the Christmas miracle. On December 14th, 2017, Angie was in the Christmas spirit and enjoying lunch with her family when she started to experience unbearable stomach pain. So she took some of the medicine her doctor had recently prescribed for the stomach ache, but she had an adverse reaction to it. And moments later, her husband Bill says things took a turn for the worse. We thought it'd just stop hurting, but it didn't. This was uh, some kind of reaction. You know, she just all of a sudden got real sick. At that time, my youngest son jumped up, ran around, grabbed her, put her in the car. We didn't get a block away, and she started having seizures and uh, foaming at the mouth. Then Angie stopped breathing. Bill pulled over and their son performed CPR until the paramedics arrived. En route to the hospital, she went into cardiac arrest multiple times. I was, I was just dying. I, I couldn't imagine life without her. Angie's my soulmate. And uh, I, I don't know if I'd want to live without her. In the emergency room, chest compressions continued. Emergency department technician Eric Stokes was part of the team working to save her life. While we're doing compressions, we'll stop and she'll start seizing. The whole time I'm pressing, I'm talking to God, like, God, please come on and just, just put your power through me right now. Help me to bring her back. Angie's heart stopped beating for up to 15 minutes several times. Meanwhile, friends and family began to gather and pray as Bill cried out to God on his wife's behalf. And I felt so helpless. And then, I, I, and then I said, well, there, I can pray. And so I got on my knees. I felt like I was in God's presence. I was pleading her case, Lord, please, you know, spare her. She's a good person. She, she you know, our family needs her. And then I felt a, a rush of, a surge of energy and, and, and I knew she was gonna be okay. Two and a half hours passed, then a glimpse of hope. Finally, Angie's pulse was steady but doctors expected her to have severe brain damage and warned Bill she may never be the same. I just kept praising God. Praise you, Lord God. Thank you. Praise God. You just keep praising God because you can't have any doubt. And Eric comes walking out. And he gave me a hug and he was like, thank you. I said, well, don't thank me. I said, uh, thank God for what he's getting ready to do. Angie's loved ones continued to pray with anticipation. On day six, she was awakened from a medically induced coma and taken off the ventilator. Doctors were astonished. They asked me, um, can you move your feet? Can you move your hands? What's the date? Um, you know, who's the president? <laughs> That's a lot of questions. And then the neurologist asked me, he goes, um, what was December 7th, 1941? And I was thinking like, why is he asking me about Pearl Harbor? I said, it's Pearl Harbor, you know? And I asked him, I, I said, well, you know, if I knew you were gonna give me a history lesson, you know, I would have studied. We all got a little chuckle out of that. He gave me a thumbs up and um, he walked out. Medical staff called her the Christmas miracle. She continued recovery and Angie was released to go home on Christmas Eve, only 11 days after her brush with death. She had no long-term health issues. In fact, she says she feels better than before. I thank the Lord for giving me a second chance. This is a second chance. Um, when you go without a heartbeat for so long, there's a, thousands of bad things that could happen, and they didn't happen to me. And I just want to give the glory to God. I want people to know that in your worst situation, the worst scenario ever, you can pray. You can pray. That's what saved me. One of the other prayers I prayed when I was in the hospital room said, Lord, please just let us walk in the pasture. Let us hold hands in the pasture again. And when we came home from the hospital, that's one of the first things we did was we drove up to our pasture and we walked in it and we held hands in the sunshine 
And we just thank God for that moment because life is a vapor. It's gone so fast. We need to do what we can and love our family and live life while we have a chance. This Christmas, Angie and Bill celebrate the joy of family, friends who have become like family, the blessing of prayer, and the gift of hope. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord is doing miracles. He's helping us every day. He is helping us every day. Absolutely, yes and amen, he is. I love, I think he was the EMT. He was the one, uh, he was the first responder that was aiding Angie as she was seizing and foaming at the mouth and even doing chest compressions on her. And he was praying to God. And then Angie's husband, after she was in the hospital and, and stable, thanked him. And I love what that man said. He said, thank God, not me, thank God for what he is getting ready to do. That man had faith. Angie's husband had faith. Angie's friends and family had faith in the healing power of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and we praise God for that. But Jesus also died on the cross to make us whole. Let us stand firm in the full gospel today. What does Jesus, what are you asking Jesus to do in your life? Is it a healing in your body? Is it a healing in your mind? Maybe it's for a loved one. Maybe it's not you, it's somebody in your life that's going through something and you're gonna stand and believe for them. Let us hold firm, stand firm to the promises of God, which are yes and amen in Christ Jesus. If you guys need prayer for anything at all, I always like to remind our viewers, we have a prayer center that's open literally 24 seven. And we've got some amazing prayer warriors on the other side of that phone call who just wanna speak the name of Jesus over you and over whatever situation you're asking prayer for. So if you want prayer, please give us a call. 1-800-700-7000, it's our honor and our privilege to stand firm with you. God bless you guys. Gordon. Well, as a CrossFit coach, Evan Henson thought he was in great shape. He was only 23 years old when he went into sudden cardiac arrest at work. When that happens outside a hospital, 95% of the time the patient dies. But not Evan. Instead, he became a Christmas miracle. Friday, December 8, 2017. 23-year-old Evan Henson was preparing for an event when he told a co-worker he didn't feel well. Seconds later, he passed out and his co-worker began CPR. His family got the call. We were just thinking something silly happened, like a, he had low blood sugar or he um, fell or something that really could be easily fixed. The reality was much worse. While Evan, a CrossFit coach, had no history of heart problems, he had gone into sudden cardiac arrest. 95% of the time that happens outside the hospital, the patient doesn't survive. And the doctor said, your son's very sick, and I don't think we can save him. I'm working on him, I'm doing all I can, but it looks bad. As the emergency teams tried to stabilize Evan's heart, he coded three times. And unfortunately, that heart was squeezing at 10%. That really showed us how sick his heart was. And at that point, we weren't very sure if it was going to recover or if he was going to stay um, in congestive heart failure. And I remember my sister walking out, and she was crying. And she was like, Carly, don't go back there. And I was like, if this is the last time I see my brother, I'm going to go back there. And during that time, he coded again. I think that was the moment where like, the fear really hit that this might be the last time. As the hours went on, the doctors gave Evan's family the grim truth. Evan could die in the next five minutes. He could live overnight, but then die the next morning, or he could make a full recovery. And he said, I'm really betting on you know option three, but it's not likely. The doctor gave the family a job of their own to do, pray. They called everyone they could, and within minutes, their friends showed up. The whole lobby was full of people. I would say at least 45, 50 people. It was amazing, and we basically took over the emergency room. Evan made it through the night, but he was hardly out of the woods. His organs were shutting down. I remember going to the bathroom and just getting on my knees and crying and praying, and 
I remember saying, God, if you need to take Evan, you know, you're still good. Dr. Giddens prayed with the family and decided Evan's best shot at survival was a transfer to St. Joseph's Hospital, a journey that was risky in itself. He again went into cardiac arrest on the stretcher, but luckily the nurse had the defibrillator in her hand and the machine could not fit on the helicopter. And so what we did was pack him down with maybe 20 bags of ice uh, to keep his body at core temperature. In the meantime, Evan started showing signs of improvement. His organs started to work again. We just put it out on Facebook. Hey, this is what the report we got this morning at 8.30. Please pray that his organs will, you know, get better. And by that night, they were. Everybody in the room was like dumbfounded because he went from like a 0% chance to, okay, his organs are completely fine. Even more surprising, his heart went from 10% functionality to 30, but no one knew what his brain activity would be. By day three, Evan started to wake up. He opened his eyes and he's rolling his head and I said, it's mom, it's mom, we're here. You're gonna be okay. I said, everybody's been coming to visit. Your CrossFit team was here. And the minute I said CrossFit, his head raised like this and he's looking around. He's looking for those CrossFit buddies. And his tears just rolled down my eyes and I said, he's got brain activity. He knows what I'm talking about. Amazingly, Evan continued to improve. Within five days, they came in and said, his heart was back to almost perfectly normal where it looked like it never happened and they couldn't understand it. I just always believe that you can't underestimate the importance and the value of faith and prayer and a supportive family um, at the bedside and nothing can replace that. Two weeks after being admitted to the hospital, Evan Hinson came home just in time for Christmas. That was the main goal. I just want to wake up on Christmas Day and be able to go into the living room and spend time with my family. I know that was the best Christmas we ever had when Evan came home. And it was the first Christmas that we didn't have a fight, we didn't have drama. We just enjoyed being together and we enjoyed life and, and thanked God for what we had in that moment. Today, Evan is working and going to college and showing no signs of heart issues. Gosh, to look at Evan. <laughs> Yeah, you know, God is amazing, and He's so great, and I'm so blessed that He's here today. I'm so blessed. She sent me a text in last December, and she said I got back the best Christmas gift I could ever ask for. I got back my son. They put it in. Evan now has a scar, and as a precaution, wears a pacemaker. But the biggest reminder of his Christmas miracle happens when people Evan has never met tell him they were praying for his recovery. It ended up giving me a lot of confidence in the Lord and in my faith and um, be able to, to really, truly understand that He does do miracles and it's just allowed me to really see that He does have a, a plan for my life and that He controls a lot more than I think He does. And He has a plan and a purpose for your life too and nothing can, can stop that plan. His love never gives up. He loves you so much that he wants his plan and purpose to be fulfilled in your life. What can cut it off is your unbelief uh, and that, that hardness of heart. Does God really want to intervene? Does he really want to change things? Does he really want the kingdom of heaven to come here on earth so that his will could, would be done on earth as it is in heaven? Well, when you have all of those doubts, you can actually stop miracles. And that's what happened to Jesus when he was here. The Gospels are very specific. He could do no mighty miracles because of their unbelief. Don't let doubt and unbelief, don't let the circumstances, don't let the symptoms, don't let the diagnosis, don't let the tragedy, don't let any of that interfere. Break through to that place in heaven where you can see miracles. His will is clear. He wants you to live. He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He doesn't want you in pain. He doesn't want you suffering.
He wants joy in your life. Joy to the world is his intent. Peace on earth, goodwill to all people. It's Christmas. We're celebrating the greatest miracle the world has ever seen in a manger in Bethlehem. The Savior of the world was born. He lived a sinless life. He died on a cross. His blood was so precious. His sinless life was so precious that it became a sacrifice for all people for all time to cleanse us all from all sin and in that to heal us all. He forgave all our iniquities and he healed all our diseases. So I declare to you right now, the kingdom of heaven can come to you. It's not based on how good you are. It's not based on anything other than his love for you. While we were sinners, he died for us. That means he died for you. Now, believe it, receive it, and you can have a miracle too. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, we come to you and we ask for miracles, signs, and wonders. Lord, as people are reaching up with, with hands of faith to you right now, we declare over them, the kingdom of heaven come. The will of God be done in their bodies as it is in heaven. May all miracles, just all that they're asking for, we come into agreement with them right now. And we say, be healed, be set free, be delivered, be restored in Jesus' name. Ashley, God's given you something. Yeah, I believe somebody's watching with severe sinus issues and it's it, you have so much pressure building up like on your forehead and just right here in your navel, um, nasal area. And I, I've never heard of this before, but it's almost as if the doctors want to try something with like a balloon going up and widening your sinus cavities. And I just believe that God is healing you right now of this condition of this just severe congestion in your sinus cavity. Just receive this healing from the Holy Spirit of God right now. Just receive it. Open your hands up. Thank you, Jesus, for this. Amen. There's someone you're suffering with shingles and it's on the right side of your body. God is able to heal you. He's able to restore every nerve that's been impacted. He's able to take away all the blisters, all the pain in Jesus' name. Be healed and be set free from that. Someone else, you've had chronic headaches. You're not even asking for it because you've just gotten used to living with them. God wants to heal you. He wants to bring joy to your life right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've been healed, let us know. If you need prayer, let us know. We believe in that prevailing prayer that doesn't give up until you get an answer, so call us. 1-800-700-7000. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of things we cannot see.